welcome to another Major Market Movements End of the Week Market Review for June 26, 2015. I'm Quad G, and in this video we're covering the PM Complex, starting off with gold. Uh, it looks to me as though this recent downtrend may be stalling a bit um, right at or just above this trend line here, which is currently below at about 1165 or so. And uh, I don't know if we got the reversal today. It's not very conclusive. Um, just a, a long-legged doji there. Uh, so I would say if we zoom in on this, if, say, on Monday we come up and the market closes above the top of the doji, uh, and that the high is at 11.7870, we get a daily close above that, then, yeah, that might entertain a bounce maybe back up here to... Uh, 11.95 or so um, at a minimum. Uh, could it be more than that? Possibly. Um, but right now, I think uh, the larger picture is gold is in a is in kind of a um, a stalled lull period uh, through the summer months, probably into August, maybe even into September. So I don't think you're going to see um, a whole lot of uh, Exciting moves and, and probably uh, not a whole lot of moves that are are going to be very tradable uh, with a lot of erratic swings, very similar to what we've seen in the last few months. So, yeah, we could get a little, we could see a bounce here soon, but I don't know if it's going to be uh, worthwhile getting into. Um, I have a, a tendency to uh, you know hold off on this market until we get into August, possibly, uh, before uh, taking a stab one way or the other, uh, long side or short side. Um, it would have to be, the market would have to give us something um, extremely clear before um, taking a stab at it. Uh, gold on the QG3, we're in a bearish alignment, and we're closing below the 3 EMA again, as um, the Bollinger Bands look to be uh, turning over and heading towards the downside here yeah, along with the uh, 20 DMA. Gold on the weekly, we get an inside key reversal uh, setting a key top there uh, at last week's high of 12.05.75 and gold on the EWO again very much uh, range bound movement here, uh, very close to the zero line. Gold's coming down here to test the 40 again. Last time it dipped below before uh, recovering. Um, we'll see whether or not the market respects it this time around or not. Um, but this trend line, a combination of this trend line and the 40 on the RSI could be enough to cause the market to at least uh, cover some of the shorts in play um, for a, a little squeeze upwards. And the MACD is closed out on the weekly. It's neutral. And it's open to the downside on the daily. So overall picture for gold, I think it's still very neutral. Um, I think we'll continue to see some choppy range-bound movement, um, possibly into August. Now, there is um, an Elliott Wave count that does account uh, for uh, a potential slide further and we'll be you know obviously be paying attention to that as well um, and we'll go into that in just a moment and give you some more detail um, let's go to silver here all right so silver on the daily, we did uh, close the day as a hammer candle, setting a key low at uh, 1551. Uh, and so we may see some fall through next week, maybe to fill in some of this manic move to the downside. Um, there's also going to be this trend line here. It's going to play as key resistance as well, which, as you can see, oh, I lost it. Try that again. All 
So this trend line here has been tested one, two, three times. So a fourth test could invite a short squeeze higher. And Uh, but we do close on the QG3 here. We do see that uh, we're closing below the 3 EMA again. Uh, if we had gotten a, a close above the 3 EMA, that would have been a bit more uh, bullish than what we got today. Um, would have been a little bit more excited about the potential for um, a move to the upside. So I think we'll just wait and see how this uh, plays into next week. Silver on the weekly, we do close lower. Um, haven't seen this uh, weekly close all the way back here since April, so um, that picture is bearish. The EWO that has a very, very, very slight positive divergence currently between this swing low and this new swing low. Um, and if that's going to hold Obviously, uh, the market's going to have to rebound fairly quickly here because it wouldn't take much to break that positive divergence with uh, another bar uh, just incrementally, incrementally lower than this swing low here. Silver on the RSI, we've broken the 40. Um, there's nothing here that, uh, that I can see that wouldn't prevent the market to continue to slide lower as far as the RSI is concerned down to test the 30 and silver on the weekly we're closed out on the MACD and on the daily we're open to the downside so overall picture again for silver yeah there could be a rebound here I'd want to give it a, maybe a little bit more time um, there is the potential of a rule of four breakout up here. Uh, if we didn't get, say Monday, we didn't get a, uh, didn't get a close uh, right at or just above 1607. Um, that would give us a, a fairly good indication that uh, we may break higher, come up here and uh, maybe fill in some of this uh, manic movement to the downside all the way up here, possibly even into 1680. But uh, other than that, uh, the rest of the picture isn't very supportive. It's very neutral or even bearish. So, um, again, I think this is the kind of uh, movement that you're going to be seeing over the next few weeks in, into August. Um, even if we do get a bounce here, um, it's, I think it could be just a dead cat bounce uh, before it's sold down again. Uh, let's go take a look at Platinum. All right, so platinum, uh, we have gotten a, a bounce here the last uh, few days, uh, but nothing overly uh, excited. The uh, platinum on the QG3 is still in a bearish alignment, though contracted somewhat, and we are uh, we've gotten three days of closes above the three EMA, so just letting us know that we're in a corrective phase, and uh, uh, after this impulsive move to the downside is uh, was finished, we're just moved into this corrective uh, bump right here. We might even test, come up and test that 20 DMA fairly soon. The weekly closes as a hammer candle, setting a key low at uh, 10.54.50. Uh, we could see there is the potential off that candle to see some fall through to the upside uh, next week. Again, it may may be just enough to test the 20 DMA um, at best uh, it may come up and test the upper Bollinger Band which is currently up here at uh, about 11.20 and Platinum on the uh, EWO we've got the uh, again we still maintain the the double positive divergence on the EWO comparing uh, this swing low this swing low and now this swing low, we've got in uh, the oscillator, we've got a higher low here and, and a second higher low for uh, a double positive divergence. But so far, 
I don't see any any significant um, uh, fall through to the upside just yet. Um, yeah, we do have the hammer candle. That's interesting, uh, but I want to wait and see. Um, I, I would wait and see the, uh, what kind of pullback you get. Um, if we get you know some flagging action, you know a slow choppy sideways move down in the next week, that might uh, be a good indication that it's going to break higher. And of course, pressuring this 20 DMA also, um, if it stalls just underneath the 20, then that would be a good indication that it may um, turn up higher as well. But a rejection at the 20, like a, a ping up and a ping right back down, um, that would be bearish. All right, so platinum and the RSI, we've got, uh, we maintain that double positive divergence there as well. Um, but we're currently down here in the, zoom in on it. Currently just tested the, the uh, 30 level and getting the bounce up. So this may be just an oversold bounce right here off the 30 level. Uh, and platinum on the daily, uh, MACD is closed out neutral and on the weekly. We're slightly bearish still uh, with the signal line just underneath the baseline there. Okay, so overall picture for platinum. Um, there's some initial good signs of a possible bounce here, uh, especially with this weekly hammer candle. Um, but I think we still need to wait and see, um, you know, before... You know, I don't trade this in the the spec reports. Uh, you, you know, if you do trade platinum, uh, based upon this um, video analysis that I do, uh, that would be interesting to know. You can drop me a line, let me know uh, if you trade it or not. Um, I cover it for the. I know that uh, in months past, I've had um, a couple traders that have been interested in trading uh, platinum uh, on an intraday basis or. Uh, a short-term basis, but uh, and that's generally why I cover it. Um, but if there's, this might be one of the markets uh, I could potentially drop if there's, um, you know, no significant, uh, you know, uh, interest in the market out there. Um, but uh, platinum, uh, overall, I do think, uh, yeah, might get a bounce, but uh, I would be a little bit leery about um, that bounce going very far at this point in time. All right, let's take a look at the uh, Elliott Wave charts. Go back here to gold. All right, so uh, the last wave structure up definitely looks uh, like a three wave correction, ABC, uh, very clear. The previous wave to that looks like it could be a five-wave move down. Um, that's finished. And now um, this move down looks like a sub-wave one that could be finished as well. And we could uh, next week maybe get a small bounce up and do a sub-wave two. Now, uh, if this bounce up comes up and challenges this blue trend line, which uh, if we back out here, yeah, there we go. If we come up and challenge that blue trend line, uh, that's going to be pretty bullish, I think, especially if we stall there and chop sideways um, into a flag. That would probably um, you know, create a, um, a short squeeze higher upon doing that. However, if this bounce up is only three waves, it looks uh, kind of shaggy, uh, very choppy, then um, it's going to be a subwave two. And my broader, larger LA wave count suggests that this could be a wave three down um, to come, possibly down in here, down into a uh, new a lower low into the, say, the uh, 1120 level or even uh, 1110, uh, somewhere in there, I think is where wave three could end. Um, so we may end up shorting this depending on this this wave behavior to the upside if we do get a bounce here fairly soon. Also, the other supporting factor for a bounce, which I don't have on here, but I see, 
is uh, this little trend line here. Let's uh, move to uh, daily. So you can see that uh, the, mark, the market may respect that blue trend line there and give it at least a little bounce at minimum. Okay, let's move on to silver. All right, silver uh, also respecting its uh, blue trend line here as well, this dash blue one. It's testing it a third time. So we may get a, a bounce off of that um, as well, yeah, possibly up into this wave E here. Uh, possibly a dollar, maybe a buck fifty or so. Um, advances what is all that I would expect to wave E to move up to. Um, there's another measurement that works well, uh, Fibo retrace value. Um, let's try that again. All right, so. Uh, bare minimum uh, for wave E is typically 50% uh, FIBO retrace of wave D to the downside. So in this case, uh, I think a bare minimum bounce would come up to about 1663. Um, the other potential I see is, of course, the 61.8% FIBO, which is up here at about 1689.90ish uh, uh, or so. So um, yeah, I want to wait and see what how next week treats this bounce. Yeah, if it's looking like um, it's gonna hold, then we may get long and, and give a, ride this little bounce higher. Uh, if not, if we stall, if we just chop sideways some more, then uh, we'll just let it go. Okay, GDX, uh, again, not showing uh, much in the way of any kind of bullishness. Uh, still looking pretty bearish here. Uh, we've broken below the gap low. Uh, we're coming in, maybe filling in some of this manic move to the upside. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the market reacts to this last uh, center of uh, congestion here. And the center of that is roughly down here at about 1783. So um, that would be the next spot to see. Uh, if the market's going to uh, give a, a bounce. Um, but short of that, there's really nothing bullish here that I can see whatsoever. So um, I think it's best to just leave it alone. And I'll take a look at the GDX on the uh, QG3. QG3 still in a very much a bearish alignment here. All indicators moving down. And uh, the price does close below the 3 EMA again. So everything bearish there uh, also the on the weekly here uh, we've got another negative close to the downside here on the weekly um, so nothing bullish there and but uh, we are coming up against this blue trend line here that connects all the way back in to uh, November and we're testing that a third time so uh, right now the the week isn't reacting to that trend line uh, it may be wanting to wait until Monday before uh, investors may want to uh, take a position above that trend line and give at least a small bounce. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, so that's the end of my coverage for the PM Complex for this week. I hope you all have a great weekend. We'll be talking to you later. Adios.